Hi again. Um, just want to share with you a dream I just had. Uh, went to uh, sleep about um, about eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning. Just got up. Uh, basically, in a dream, um, there was me, my wife, my kids, uh, including some friends I knew. My mother was there. Um, we were at this huge um, place that kind of like looked like the Roman Colosseum. Well, in the Colosseum, they had like different uh, shows, uh, different um, events that were going on. And uh, what happened is prior to that, my dream like kind of faded away and went to a book that I saw and uh, the book title was called The Rise of the One Coming. Uh, from there that uh, story was in, in, entwined with, uh, with the, the Antichrist. Um, so uh, the story, how the story went, is that uh, he he was he was born. Um, people loved him. They served him. He rose up to be a king. Uh, this is how my story went in my mind when I was dreaming. So he rised up to be a king, and uh, he wanted to overthrow the other king. And so what happened is that. Uh, after all that was done, as I saw the book, it closed and I was back at the Colosseum again. However, this is where the story started getting more and more intense, more and more interesting. The uh, people that I did not know, uh, they were all in one single line, you know, trying to find a seat in which they had an opportunity to sit down, you know, and, and, and hopefully and, and look at the show that was going on on this event. Um, my mom was there and she was complaining about her, her pains that she had in her back, her neck. Um, she was like really tired of it and she just wanted to stop. My kids and my wife uh, were there and they weren't so much complaining, but they were just kind of anxious of wanting to sit down because we've been up so long and, you know, looking around this, this, this place, it was so big. So they decided that, you know, they'd rather sit down and relax. Well, however, uh, one individual uh, popped up in this, um, this Coliseum, and he was one of the persons in the crowd and his voice started changing and he looked directly square to square to me like face to face um, and said I want you I want you and I want you bad and I'm coming to get you he said and um, and he says by the way I got followers beyond your your imagination that you can count and so when he said that I seen like tons and tons of people in his Coliseum pop up at the same time and all of a sudden they started changing and they were running after me and so I grabbed, I immediately grabbed my mom, my my wife, my kids and the people who came with me, my friends, you know, and we all ran and we ran to the exit door uh, in the Coliseum and so when we went into the cave or rather when we went into the, the exit door, inside the exit door was like a cave-like scenery and it had all kinds of rocks around us, huge, big, gigantic boulders. And um, when we got inside, you can hear the growling and, and snarling of these people trying to chase us. And so I heard a voice says, you know, it basically said, you know, they, they, they won't get you. You know, they won't touch you. I will protect you. And then all of a sudden you see... Uh, these these rocks that were like on top of the uh, the, the the ceiling thing 
uh, started falling down on him. Every time it would fall on one, it would fall on the other and so forth down the line until it hit the, the main guy who was basically looking at me. So every time a rock would hit this guy, he, 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 would, he would get smashed and he would reform himself. So that happened like about uh, six or seven times. And I couldn't believe it. You know, this guy wasn't going to die. He was really, really serious to try to get me. And so we ran deeper into the cave. So as we ran deeper inside this cave, you know, you could see the rocks started falling down in sequence to block this in, to block this guy from getting at us. And then uh, after that, we kind of like, you know, was in, in some form of protection. And then at the same time, as this guy had faded away, you know, another scenery came in with all these other rocks and the piles started talking. So all all these rocks that were in a deep pile, you could start you could start hearing voices coming from these rocks. And these rocks basically uh, started glowing. And and at one time when they would speak, uh, everybody would speak at the same time and I I don't know what the name they called them, but to me it sounded like a um, a different name besides legion, you know, meaning many. So it was a different term that they use. So again, I can't quite remember what the uh, what the name was. And so once that happened, you can see that glow or that look and these other rocks started going down to the ground. And then once they hit the ground, you can see the, the ground started forming like these different um, like rock and root, root creatures. And so what happened is, um, after I decided to um, try to find another way out, you know, I, I, I heard the voice say again, you know, that, you know, to stand firm, because here they come. And so what happened is when I was trying to try to find this other exit, as soon as I stepped on the ground, the voices coming from the rock said, get him, you know, get him, get him good, you know, kill him, kill him all. And I immediately got scared and startled. So again, we all ran out of the, this other exit that we found back into the Colosseum. Well, at this time, the Colosseum had changed around into like a, a, a big form of water. And uh, on the other side was like hills. So like half of that Colosseum was changed to hills and water and it had like a ledge where you can jump down and get into the water to go to the other side and I said to the people that was with me I said this is the only way that we can you know exit and and hopefully escape from these people that are trying to get us and so every one of us jumped into the water off this edge and swam across this uh, this lake up to the other side of the shore there we had to climb up a ladder to get on top of the other banks Sorry about the pause there. I had to restart the video because I had some distortion. Um, well, pertaining to these um, uh, rocks and everything, so once we find the exit again, and once we saw what the scenery had looked like, you know, it was like um, a, a lake and a uh, like a, 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 a hill, a hill and a uh, and a bank where you can jump down into the lake. So as we went across this lake, because I told the people who were with me, said this is the only way that we can go down, you know, towards this lake, you know, and reach the other side so that we can escape these creatures that were after us. And so once we did that, we came to the other side and we, and then I saw this, um, uh, like figure in, in the back. So he, he looked like a, like a feral. Uh, the way he the way he was paused and and how he was sitting so we, we couldn't see his face because he would never turn to us so he would every time he would talk he would just talk like just looking forward but he never turned around you know and looked at us and I told him I said excuse me sir you know I don't I don't mean disrespect I don't mean any kind of like disrespect but we we have these creatures coming after us you know and and we, we really need your help you know and, and all these people in this Coliseum is is going to be in danger 
So what happened is the girl says, it's okay, you know, you, you, you can go ahead and sit behind me and you would have nothing to worry about, ever worry about. And I said, okay. So uh, half of this Coliseum again was like, you had like all these people on one side and then on the other side, again, you, you had this, this lake, hill and other banks. So the lake itself, it was kind of interesting because the lake had some rocks in the middle of it. Well, within the middle of this rock, they had like another form of water. So it was the same texture and the same water that was on the other side. So it kind of looked like the water was like connected to each other uh, from, the, the, from the center of the rock. So uh, again, we, I looked back at the Pharaoh and I saw like all these other soldiers that the uh, Pharaoh had around him and um, so as we were talking you know I kind of looked down and, and and I and I saw these creatures starting to come and get us and meanwhile I see this hand this huge huge hand come out of this uh, center of this rock uh, that was filled with water and rested itself on the dry on um, uh, part of the dry rock and so did the other hand did the exact same thing the other hand did and then all of a sudden you, you see the feet starting to come on out. I mean, this this hand and these feet were so big, you, you couldn't believe it, you know? I mean, it was huge. And then all of a sudden you, you'll see the body and the head started rising up. So it was the same individual that was after me. It just that it, his, his appearance had changed and he got much, much bigger. Um, and by looking at him, he looked like a Roman soldier. Um, so that's that's the thing that kind of puzzles me a little bit. But he looked like a, a, a Roman soldier, and uh, him and the Pharaoh were talking. And the Pharaoh says, "I see your real appearance. I see who you are, you know." Uh, and then uh, he blurted out, "He says, you know, you're the beast. You're you're, you're the beast. You, you know, I see who you are." And says, "You will not put your hand on these people, you know. I, I I have these people in my protection. These people belong to me in my name." He said. And then um, when he said that, the, uh, the, the person or that, that, that guy I mentioned to you inside the center of this rock commanded his, his creatures to come and get us. So again, these creatures look like rock formations and some kind of like rooted creatures. You know, they were all coming up towards the bank and trying to attack the people. So the people who were being attacked some of them got like you know mauled over by these creatures and they themselves became the creature because the creature overtook them so whatever creature overtook overtook uh, the people the people become that type of creature and the, the 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 strange thing that I saw is that when I looked up and and I and I kind of like turned behind me um, I, I saw more creatures up on top, you know, trying to trying this way to come down and, and try to attack me, my wife, my kids, my mom, and the people who I brought with me. And so one of the creatures kind of like jumped up and paused while a soldier of the Pharaoh came around and he paused above me like this. And you could see him drawing a sword coming up and slicing the creature down and killing the creature. You know, so that happened like about six or seven times in my dream. And I was just in awe, like, wow, you know, I mean, this Pharaoh means business, you know, he's he's doing his thing, you know, and, and these soldiers that are, are with him was like, you know, there was nothing that, that the creatures could do to stop, to stop these soldiers. So none of the soldiers died, but each time they would kill a creature, you know, you, you could see that the stronger that the Pharaoh's soldiers became. So... Again, you know, after all the battle was done, and then after the thing was, was ceased, you know, you could see the rest of the people who were protected stood up and gave applause and, and, and gave thanks to the Pharaoh, you know, and the Pharaoh said to me, he was like, you have nothing to worry about. I will always have your back. Just remember one thing. And I said, what's that, sir? And that's when the dream ended. The dream had ended at that time.